The Oakland A's have a long and storied career, from the 1929 World Champions under Connie Mack to the three straight World Series to start the 70s. The A's colorful and successful history has provided baseball watchers everywhere with some memorable moments. The Wild West Show from Jacobs Field, coming next on Fox Sports Net. The chilly start to this Memorial Day weekend as cars head into downtown Cleveland. The Indians get their first look at the Oakland A's this season right here on Fox Sports Net. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Keegan along with Rick Manning. Of course, Rick snapping that losing streak last night. We're going to get a look at two pretty good young left-handers tonight. It should be a nice matchup tonight. you got Barry Zito going for the Oakland A's, and this guy has a knockout curveball. Big 12-6 to six spin, but he'll get a lot of strikeouts with a high fastball. On the other hand, Cliff Lee, the only undefeated uh, pitcher in the American League. He's not afraid to pitch the right-handers in. He's got a good slider to the left-handers. And Cliff Lee has been on a very nice roll. When you look at Zito this year, 3-3 three three with an ERA of over 5. Cliff Lee, 5-0 and, oh and a fine 321 ERA. So let's take a look at tonight's Toyota Key to Victory brought to you by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Double it up. The Indians stopped their seven-game losing streak last night. See if they can come right back and start a winning streak again tonight. Jody Garrett, Ronnie Belliard got it going last night with three hits apiece. They want to keep it going tonight. Indians and A's next on Fox Sports Net. Cleveland Indians baseball on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you by your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams store. For your next paint or wallpaper project, ask Sherwin-Williams. Buy Ford, see your local Ford store. McDonald's and your local Northeast Ohio McDonald's restaurants, I'm loving it. Buy Continental, work hard, fly right. Rico, how well do you print, copy, scan, fax? How well do you share? Welcome back to Jacobs Field in the last half hour or so the clouds have left it's a sunny evening still cool about 57 degrees here at game time as the Indians get ready to face the Oakland A's for the first time let's take a look at Kenny Maka's lineup tonight it will be Burns Kilty and Chavez going one two and three a wild one in Boston last night and Eric Chavez went one for five with three runs batted in then die Hatterberg and Durazo Damian Miller, Bobby Crosby, and Marcus Cataro will round it out. It'll be Cliff Lee on the mound for the Indians tonight, making his 10th start. He is undefeated, the only American League pitcher to remain undefeated at this point at 5-0, a 321 earned run average, which is seventh best in the American League. And you look at the scouting report for Cliff Lee, he's got the fastball slider, curving a changeup, and undefeated he is. And the first look, first time he has ever faced the Oakland Athletics, and uh, he has done quite a job here at home. He is making his fifth start here at Jacobs Field, and he is 4-0 this year. So he is also undefeated in this ballpark. The defense behind Cliff Lee stacks up this way. In the outfield from left to right is going to be Lawton left, Garrett in center, Escobar in right, Blake at third, the skeleton short, Belliard at second, Merloni at first, Martin is behind the plate, and Omar has settled down. No errors in his last 14 games. Look at some of the sun-drenched crowd out there on the first base side and down the right field line. Cloudy, cold all day today. Players remarking before the ball game, this is Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> when will we have summer? It's been that way here in downtown Cleveland as Cliff Lee gets set to go and delivers a first pitch strike to Eric Burns. Burns, not what you would call your typical leadoff hitter. He's a big guy. But since inserted into that leadoff role about 10 or 11 games ago, he's done well. Yes, he has. Kotze was normally supposed to lead off today, but he was taken out of the ball game uh, prior to batting practice. Eric Burns hitting 309, four homers, 15 RBIs. He's a big guy but can run. Has stolen seven bases. Hit on the ground is short. Omar will turn, throw him out. Omar Vizquel with a nice play. And there's one out. Well, let's take a look at tonight's umpiring lineup brought to you by Nuremberg, Clevin, Heller, and McCarthy. Make the right call for personal injury and medical malpractice. Justice for the injured since 1928. Drake, Runge, Hone, and Darling, the umpires. Bobby Kilty, who we saw in the American League with the Twins and 
Toronto. Toronto, yep. the Blue Jays. Switch hitter batting from the right side. That one popped up. Tough play. And Kelly aired off the glove. I'm not so sure that that son didn't have something to do with it, too. The way he had to turn and go after that ball, Mike. He was looking back over his left shoulder. And that son's coming in from that side, and it may have had an effect. He looks up, and it ends up going off the end of his glove. Looked like he had a beat on it. But it'll go as a base hit. The problem right now with the Sun, as you look at it coming over the scoreboard, is with Lou Merloni holding on the runner at first base. Big cut from Eric Chavez at a high fastball. This is a, like double jeopardy here for the first baseman, Rick. You're looking into the Sun. You've got a left-handed pitcher and a left-handed hitter. Yeah, that's right. Wow. So it, it is very, very difficult for Lou Merloni. Chavez has picked up right where left off. In fact, Merloni wearing the glasses down all the way right now. But Eric Chavez, 13 home runs. He has driven in 31. Matt Lawton, long run. Casey Blake giving chase, and it will be back in the first row. Nice catch down there. Well, for Eric Chavez, uh, Oakland made their commitment to him as they wanted to keep him around. They signed him to a new six-year contract. You can see the leading the league in home runs. They made that commitment to him, so he felt like he wanted to stay in Oakland as long as they also go out and try and sign a couple of their pitchers. Could be, too. Omar can't get rid of it. Coming across the bag. Had trouble with the transfer, but they get one. Nice play by Cliff Lee to get the lead runner at second base. Yeah, that should have been a double play ball, but you'll see in the, as soon as Cliff, he gives him a good feed. You just watch, Omar did not have the ball in his hand. As he's trying to get it down and just had a, a tough time gripping the ball. Or he would have turned that double play. So Oakland's gonna get an extra out in this inning. Here's Jermaine Dye who spent much of last year injured, really never got on track last year. But when this guy is healthy, he is a big time run producer. Power numbers, nine home runs, 29 driven in. Another big guy that really likes to extend the arms. You would like to try and tie him up on the inside part of the plate if you can, and then get him to chase the breaking balls down in the zone once you get ahead. Right in there, it's two and one. Well, when Jermaine Dye made his strides offensively in Kansas City in the first year, in Oakland, he was taking the ball uh -huh. to the gap in right center field. There goes the runner. Big jump. Throw to second. And there will be no chance. Got a huge jump. Yeah, that was uh, that was not Victor's fault right there. Cliff Lee didn't keep an eye on him. And Oakland's not a team that runs a lot. They are 13th in the league in stolen bases. That's just their 17th stolen base. But you'll see he never made him, st uh, made him stop. So really no chance for Victor to throw him out. That one chalk up to Cliff Lee. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs now. Jermaine Dye with the runner in scoring position just a little bit low, and it's a full count. Eric, Eric Burns leads the club with seven stolen bases. That is number four for Chavez. He has not been thrown out, nor has Burns, and that's ball four down low. And uh, Cliff's last start, he was spotted a 3 nothing lead down in Tampa in the top half of that first inning and came back and had problems throwing strikes in that first inning. Ended up giving up three runs, walked a couple, hit a guy, and an RBI single. And then uh, he seemed to settle down after that, gave up that fourth inning home run, and after that he was, he was fine. He pitched seven and two-thirds innings. And here is one tough out right here, Scott Hatterberg. Good contact hitter, and it really doesn't make much difference left-hander, right-hander, right. throwing on the mound. He makes good contact and hits very well with runners in scoring position.
fastball at the knees, one ball and one strike. Atterberg hot this month, hitting 351 and hitting 421 with runners in scoring position. This one lifted in the air and it will head down the line into the seats and out of play. This Oakland team, a team of hitters that's they're patient up there. They're not going to give you many uh, easy innings. They're going to try and make you and work deep into the count if possible. They're on that philosophy, that on-base percentage. You know, they want to they want to walk. They don't want to hit for maybe three or four pitches are thrown in every at-bat. One ball, two strikes, runners at first and second. Got him. High fastball, Atterberg strikes out. Inning is over then. A's get a hit, fail to score. We go to the bottom of the first. Indians coming to bat. Eric Wedge feeling a little better tonight. His ball club snapped the losing streak last night. Let's see what he has in store for Barry Zito. The lineup brought to you by Rico. Belliard, Vizquel, and Lawton, one, two, and three. Martinez, Blake, and Garrett, four, five, and six. Casey Blake, a couple of base hits and RBIs last night. Then Merloni, Hafner, and Escobar. Barry Zito making his 10th start. 3-3 three and three record, 556 earned run average. And for 18 walks, 44 strikeouts, very good. The scouting report on Zito, he has the fastball, he's got a cur good curve and a changeup. And giving it up, he's given up nine home runs in his 55 innings pitch. And it's been a while, two years since he's faced the Cleveland Indians. But 2-0 lifetime against the Indians with an earned run average of 1.15, 25 year old left-hander. Born in Las Vegas, lives in Van Nuys, California. For the Indians, he's not overpowering. He'll anywhere top out around 88, but he's got the good curve ball. And you've got to make him get the ball up. When he's down around the knees, it can be awfully tough. Because there's that big, slow curve ball. Cy Young winner in 2002. 25 years old, won 23 games, won 23 and five. That's that big off-speed pitch. Two and two, and he'll throw it any place. In the, yes, he'll he throw will. it ahead, he'll throw it behind. He'll throw it three, two. Ronnie Belliard, still among the league leaders in batting and also especially against left-handed hitting. Belliard hitting 435 against the left but that one in the dirt, and Miller will throw him out. It's a big curveball from Barry Zito. Let's set the defense for Oakland. It's Kelty in left, Burns in center, Die in right, Chavez at third, Crosby at short, Taro at second, Atterberg at first, Miller behind the plate, and Atterberg, no errors this season. As a matter of fact, you can look at their right side of the infield. Scaturro has none either. So the right side of that infield, and they are the best fielding club in this league. They are rated number one, highest fielding percentage. They have made only 22 errors, 988 the fielding percentage. The Indians, meanwhile, have committed 33 errors. Omar takes upstairs, one ball and one strike. Omar has hit in four straight, the batting average up over 300, in fact, hitting 333 in his last 14 ball games. Right back to Zito, and he throws out the scale, two up, two down here in the first inning. Now that's that pitch. It's tough to really center on that big slow curveball going down. So you're going to have to try and pick something at fastball early in the count if you can. The Indians were aggressive last night. 11 of their 12 hits in the ball game, like coming from pitches one to three. Never got higher than three. They had 11 out of their 12 hits early in the count. Matt Lawton likes to swing early. Uh, Zito. Misses inside with a fastball there. Well, this might be a tale of two ball clubs here, especially last night. Although the Indians have been very good as that one heads back up the middle. A base hit for Matt Lawton. 
have really been very good working counts this year for yes, the most they part. Have. Well, they uh, lead the league in on-base percentage. Between their walks, their base hits are hitting 278 as a team. Lawton gets a base hit on a, like a little slider or a breaking ball there. Takes it right back up the middle. They have 182 walks, which is third in the league. So they've had their share of base runners. Zito, a guy you can run on. He'll have a slow to the plate, about 1.5 seconds. That's from his first move, getting the ball to the catcher, and then they have times on the catcher on their throws to second. And the yep, and they got him. He went on first move. No, he's safe. He missed the tag. Throw from Hatterberg and the third shot shortstop Crosby missed the tag. Uh, and plus, it took uh, Hatterberg a while to get out that ball out of his glove. And when you watch Lawton's leg, that'll go as a stolen base. His 11th. He went on first move, and he's slow over there. So the first baseman's got to come inside the line. And by the time he could apply the tag, Lawton's foot was in there. And the umpire stayed with that call pretty well. You see where he tagged him? He almost thought he was going to put a leg out there, and he didn't have anything to tag. Yeah, he took it back. Good slide by Matt Lawton. And second base umpire Bill Hahn right on it made the call. So an opportunity for Victor as that pitch runs inside. It's one ball and no strikes. Victor Martinez among the league leaders now. With nine home runs, he has driven in 37. And that stops among catchers in the American League. Those 37 runs batted in. Now he's second in the league behind David Ortiz, who has uh, 39. Rodriguez has 36. This one hit high in the air to left, but plenty of room out there. Looked like it jammed Victor, and he got under it. Guilty will handle it, and the Indians go out here in the first inning. After one at Jacobs Field, there's no score. Cliff Lee ready to go here against Eusebio Durazo, the D.H., Last year, his first year with Oakland, hit 21 home runs, drove in 77. That pitch just a bit outside, came over from Arizona in a three-way deal. And he's one guy who is completely suited for the DH role. That one jams him. Might be a little bit like Travis Hafner, Rick, in that First base is his position, but right. not particularly adept with the gloves, the leather. Good point. Uh, both similar left-handed hitters. They use the big part of the ball field, alley to alley. Talked about Scott Atterberg, and when he comes up again, we'll maybe go through his litany of last year. But here's another guy that saw almost four pitches per at-bat last year. So he's very disciplined at the plate. That was the fourth pitch that he saw in that at bat. Looked like a breaking ball from Cliff Lee, and he waited back nicely. Yeah, it looks uh, like that pitch is a little bit upstairs on the breaking ball. You'll see it coming out, and yes, it hung right there. That was the middle of the plate, and got away. Had a one-two count. Probably tried to throw that pitch down and away. Didn't get it there. So it's the second hit for the A's. And Damian Miller. Another new member of the Oakland Ball Club. Bobby Gilty, Damian Miller. Mark Kutze. Miller over from the Cubs. Oakland a lot like Cleveland. They cannot go ahead then when they had guys up like Giambi and Tejada. The second for one, the relay. Good stretch, got him. 5 4 3, double play, two outs here in the second. The 40th double play turned by the Indians. That's the 45th that Oakland has hit into. They have hit into actually the most in the league. Right there, and that's just what Cliff Lee, Cliff Lee needed. 
tough job for this youngster, Bobby Crosby, trying to fill the shoes of Miguel Tejada. Crosby has homered seven times, driven in 19, but hitting just 223. And looks like he is a big three swinger, Rick. Yeah, he's off the plate. And, you know, it's almost like when you watch him, it doesn't look like he can cover the outside part of the plate. He probably looks for that ball middle in. Trying to keep the ball down in the way. Just 24 years old, 6'3", 195 pounds. First round pick by Oakland in 2001, so out of Cal State Long Beach, didn't take them long to no, get into the big league. You know, you know you're getting old, Mike. I played with baseball with his dad, Ed Crosby, who was in this organization with Buddy and myself, an infielder. That's ball four. Well, uh, club seats at Jacobs Field are premium seating at its finest, and the Indians have limited inventory of club seats available for season ticket purchases. Club seat patrons receive a list of amenities, including all-inclusive and unlimited food and beverage packets. So, for details, and you want to speak to an account exec, call 216-420-HIT. Number nine hitter, former Indian property, Marcus Cataro. Fouls it off. He's playing second base tonight, hitting 293. Mark Ellis, their regular everyday second baseman on the disabled list. And this guy has done a nice job for him, filling in. He, uh, as I mentioned, he has made no errors this year defensively. When he was in the Indians minor league system, he ended up playing for uh, Joel Skinner and also Jeff Dat. Pretty good utility player. He is 28 years old and has played in the National League with the Mets. He was originally Rick traded from the Indian organization to Milwaukee. That was the deal that brought Bob Wickman over here with Steve Woodard. Richie Sexton went to Milwaukee. Two balls and a strike as Lee checks the runner, and this one hit well to left. If it's fair, it is going to be trouble. It's off the wall. Matt Lawton fielding it well and getting it quickly back to the infield. Nice play by Matt Lawton on uh, tear him off the wall to keep the runner, Crosby, from scoring. Well, he, uh, he knew this ball was going to be in there. He thought he might have had enough to get it out, but it hits halfway up on the wall, and Lawton does play it nicely. One hopper right to him. They've got to stop Crosby at third base. Guitaro goes into second, his 11th double. Now the A's trying to do something with two outs, second and third. Back to the top of the lineup. Yeah, second appearance for Eric Burns here against Cliff Lee. Two outs. Crosby at third, Guitaro at second. And Burns looks at a ball in the dirt. Nice stop by... Victor Martinez. Burns grounded out. 6-3 in the first inning. Outfield straight away. The wind tonight blowing in from center field. Actually, probably more like right center. From about 10 miles an hour. Cool evening. 55, 56 degrees. As you look at the flag. Just inside. Tough to really get any reading on this ballpark this year, Rick. We haven't had much warm weather. We've had a couple of nights when the wind's blowing out, but for the most part, it's been cool and that wind blowing yep. in. And yeah, when it's been like that in the springtime. You're exactly right, where we haven't had enough. We've had a few days of humidity where the ball has carried a little bit, but not like we're used to. Eric saying before the ball game, we, we got to get to feel like baseball weather around here. It hasn't 
been much of that so far. Strike called, and maybe Burns thought it was outside. Two and one. Cliff Lee has been nothing short of tremendous so far this year. Five and oh. Yeah, has allowed only two runs in seven of his nine, two runs or less in seven of his nine starts. Only undefeated pitcher in the American League and in the National League, only Paul Wilson and Roger Clemens are undefeated. They are 7-0. and Cliff Lee at 5-0 and on the fine earned run average of 3.21. And a bit of a jam here, but there are two outs. Two balls, two strikes. Upstairs with the fastball, he missed three and two. Indians struggled against the A's last year, winning just three ball games in the nine that the two teams played, and they were only one and five in Oakland. Got it! Again, high fastball, and again, an Oakland A's hitter chases it, and that ends the inning for the second time. Cliff Lee has ended it with a strikeout. Oakland Indians coverage on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you in part by Ohio Lottery. Play $25,000 dollar Holden poker the Ohio lottery's new two dollar instant game with over 6.3 million in cash prizes Wendy's when you get that late night craving drive through a Wendy's late night window where you can eat great even late Geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second inning a chilly evening here in downtown Cleveland but the sun is shining what we understand, the, the clouds have gone for a while, let's hope anyway. Yes, indeed. Casey Blake, who had a couple of base hits last night, four for his last 20, but two of those four have been for home runs. Well, it'd be nice to see Casey start heating it up a little bit because he was in a little funk for a while. Set up outside, pitches away, and Casey tried to take it that way but fouled it off. Part of the problem with the Indians right now, Rick, is they are struggling against left-handed starters. They've won only three ball games all year in which a lefty has started, and they have lost 14. And many of their hitters just struggling against yeah, lefties. The right-handers have been struggling yeah. against the lefties. Sometimes if you look at the lefties, they've done all right against left-handers. Tried to hold up on a high fastball, couldn't do it. That's the second strikeout for Barry Zito, one down here in the second inning. Well, for all your insurance and financial services needs, check with your good neighbor, State Farm agents of the game, Tony Sober in Beachwood, Chuck Boog in Westlake. Barry Zito, not what you would call a hard thrower. Fastball, maybe top out 90, 91. Not even. It's probably about 88, 89. But he's got that good, the off-speed pitch. He's got the straight change up in that that great curveball. One zero pitch. Jody batting in the sixth spot tonight against the left-hander. Matt Lawton, actually, one of the few Indians hitting better against left-handers, and Matt is a left-handed hitter. That one popped up behind third base, heading towards the seats, giving chase as Chavez. It will be out of play. Take a look at our Corona miles away from the ordinary. Barry Zito, his grandmother founded a religious faith. His parents worked with Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra, and his uncle is actor Patrick Duffy. Remember him of Dallas fame. Yeah, he comes from a show business family. Uh, not the only star in the family. Two-two pitch. That's the curveball, and that's hot. But Pettyberg will beat Garrett to the bag. Two out. 
Well, Indian fans, keep your eyes on the first energy sign in right center field during tonight's game when an Indians player hits a home run over the first energy sign. First Energy will donate four game tickets and $250 to the Ronald McDonald House Charity of Northeastern Ohio. First Energy, our energy is working for you. Two down, and the pitch inside to Lou Merloni. Merloni has had success against the lefties. That pitch inside. Hitting 324 against left-handed hitters, or pitchers. Yeah, all seven RBIs that he has have come off lefties. It's out of that open stance. And now three balls and no strikes. Outfield shaded a bit toward right. See if Maloney has a green light here. That's the fastball in and over. Three and one. Popped him up and out of play. Well, get to your Buffalo Wild Wings for great wings and your chance to win a Buffalo Wild Wings Century Harley Davidson motorcycle enter at any Northeast Ohio, Youngstown, or Toledo. Buffalo Wild Wings are at the Century Harley-Davidson in Medina today. Full count, two out. No score, bottom of the second inning. First of three here between the Indians and the Oakland A's. That one, lazy fly ball to center, and Burns has it. Three up, three down here in the second inning. We go to the third, no score. night here at Jacobs Field as usual on Friday night. Good crowd on hand. Bleachers are full out in left field. Fireworks night tomorrow night. As this one is popped up to short right. Coming in is Escobar. Coming over is Garrett and Jody Garrett will make the call on Bobby Kilty. There's one out here in the third. Well, make a big event like a birthday or a wedding proposal even more special. You can order a scoreboard grading for a game right here at Jacobs Field and the Tribe's friendly customer service staff will be ready to take your order. 216-420-HIT. First pitch to Chavez inside, ball one. You'd like to see a, a quick inning if possible here for right. Cliff Lee. Uh, I told you, that the, the Oakland hitters, they're a very patient bunch out of the uh, 11 hitters, uh, nine of them have had four more pitches. So they're going to make you work. They're not going to give you easy innings. So if Cliff can get ahead, maybe strike one with some quality strikes out there, and then go to work, maybe force him to swing the bat a little bit. Ahead there, one ball and two strikes. And in, in the first inning, unfortunately, Omar couldn't turn the double play, and that added 10 extra pitches That's to exactly Cliff right. Lee in the first inning. One, two, got him. Chased the fastball. Looked like he was protecting inside and couldn't reach that outside part of the plate. That's the third strikeout. Either that, uh, as we said, that Cliff has never faced these guys before, so they don't really know a pattern that he has, but he just went right at him, a good fastball away, and he was tardy on it. It was in a good location. Maybe he was sitting breaking ball, but he didn't get it. Three strikeouts now for Lee. All three strikeouts have come on the fastball. He's a little herky-jerky in his delivery, and it looks like that fastball might get on hitters. Yes, I agree, because it's tough to pick him up. 1-0 to die. He never really lets you see much of that baseball until it's out in front of him. And then the next thing you know, it's on you as a hitter, and you know, there are some pitchers like that that are just sneaky. All of a sudden, that ball gets on you, and it's just tough to pick it up. Hides it very well. That's the strike. Good pitch at the knees on the outside corner to Jermaine Dye. That's a good pitch 2-0 and oh, if you can hit that out there because most hitters aren't looking there with the count 2-0. and oh. 
Well, as you see, they, they'll take a lot. They've taken a lot of, uh, in hitters count so far to this point, and they may be testing him for maybe that third time down the road when they do get into counts to hit to see what he will throw in that situation. Here's another hitter's count, 3-1. And he worked it outside, ball four. So the second time, he has walked Jermaine Dye. Well, we'd like to take time to extend a special welcome to all of those watching on Fox Sports Net Indians Baseball on Watch TV in Lima and Video Associates in Youngstown, Ohio. We hope you're enjoying the ball game here tonight. No score. Top of the third inning, Mike Egan, Rick Manning with you. The beginning of a holiday weekend. Let's hope that by the time Monday rolls around, it'll feel more like summer. Feels like early spring here. Right, you got plans on that off day on Monday? Yeah, May. Seeing <laughs> <laughs> it up, maybe? Seeing it up, yep. <laughs> Scott Hatterberg, a strikeout victim against Cliff Lee. Miles that one off, and it's 0-2, and, and this is just what you were talking about, Rick, with Cliff Lee, trying to get ahead of these guys and, and then put them away and, early. And then hopefully you can expand their strike zone a little bit, even though they're patient. They're really patient when they have the count in their favor. So we'll see how Cliff attacks Hatterberg here in the count 0-2. Merloni shading his eyes. That sun right in his eyes now at first base. It's very low, and it's almost gone, really. And the only one, watch Lou Merloni when he gets down and trying to hold the runner on. I mean, his, he is staring right into the sun. That one popped up. Out of play, one and two. Cliff Lee trying to become the first Indians pitcher since Julian Tavares. 1995 started 6 and 0. Greg Swindell did it in 88. Dennis Martinez in 1995 started 9, nine and 0. Yes, exactly right. Popped him up at home plate. Victor with the mask off. Now chasing it makes the catch. That will do it. He pops up Hatterberg to end the third. We go to the bottom of the third inning. No score from Jacob Shields. Back here at Jacobs Field, we go to the bottom of the third inning. Travis Hafner will lead off. Travis, Jerem Zito fouls it back just beneath us, off to the left and out of play. Hafner hitting 283 with seven home runs and 33 runs batted in. And he's have, I think he's having as solid a year. Uh, I mean above expectations, Rick. He, he's a guy who really struggled a little bit last year at the plate. He had some wrist problems yeah. last year, if you remember. Injury-wise, he seems to be healthy this year. As a matter of fact, as DHs, he's leading the league. He's ahead of David Ortiz. So Travis Hafner with 33 RBIs. Ortiz has, what, 29? And Frank Thomas is down there about 28. There you'll see. And Durazo in this game with 25. So Hafner doing everything he's been asked yeah. to do. 32 of his 33 runs batted in have come as a DH. That's why Travis had a couple of fastballs to hit in those first two pitches, and he fouled them off. And now he's going to get Uncle Charlie there, that big old slow hook. What he will do, though, he surprises you. When he gets the hitters, you know, with two strikes, sometimes they'll look for that curveball, and he'll throw that fastball uh, right fastball. by you upstairs. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you about when they, they want it up. They want that fastball in after the slow hook. And Travis was looking for it. Now, he didn't get it up enough, and he didn't get it in enough. And that was an 0-2 pitch, so a nice job by Travis Hafner to stay alive and get a base hit. See, watch the location of this pitch. They want it on the inside part of the plate and up right dead middle, right down the middle, right there. So he took advantage of it. Yeah, you can see Miller's glove move back on the plate. That's not a good sign for a pitcher. Good sign for a hitter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't expect to see one middle of the plate there. <laughs> You're hoping you get something like that from a Barry Zito. He doesn't make too many mistakes, or he hasn't in the past. This year has been a little different. Hits the third, swinging at the first pitch. Escobar will beat it out as Hafner got down and broke it up. Cataro had no play. Looked like uh, 
Chavez at third had a tough time getting it out of his glove. Right here, he one-hands it and had to double pump and then give him a low throw. And by that time, Hafner did a nice job to get down there and take the feet away from Scaturro so they could not turn it. So now, two out. And Ron Belliard back to the top of the order. Belliard hitting against Zito. Struck out on a breaking ball back in the first inning. You know, the amazing thing when you look at him, Mike, you figure that big book would, you know, intimidate some of the left-handers. But so far tonight, the Indians left-handers are two for three. And on the season, lefties are hitting 341 against Zito. That's a breaking ball, and it drops in for a strike. And Belliard coming in second in the league against left-handed pitchers, hitting 435. He's 0 for 1. Boy, it was up to, what, about 520. Yeah. Tried to time it up, couldn't do it. And it's 0-2. Oh now, Zito is fairly conventional for a left-hander is in that he comes straight right. over the top. So he, he's, he's not real deceptive as Cliff Lee is. Cliff right. Lee is herky-jerky, three and quarters. And you'll pick uh, the ball up from him a lot. Yeah. You'll see it a lot sooner than you will off Cliff Lee. So he may be a little easier for left-handed hitters to handle than other lefties. But when he throws his good curveball, it doesn't make much difference. One-two pitch. Jam and backhanded by the shortstop who throws the second for one. The relay gets it. Nice play by Crosby. 6 4 3 double play ends the inning for the Indians here. And a nice play by the shortstop. We are through three at Jacobs Field and still no score. Good pitchers battle going here between two young left handers. Cliff Lee, Barry Zito, it's Lee on the mound here in the fourth inning against Eusebio Durazo, the DH. Durazo, Miller, and Crosby. And Durazo fouls it back. Got a base hit off Cliff Lee in the second inning. Waited well on a breaking yep. ball. One, two breaking ball, single to right. down low, one ball and one strike. Oh, Oakland A's got off to a, a terrible start, but they are 15 and 8 here in the month of May. And a lot, a lot of that goes to their starting pitching. Yeah, doesn't it always seem like in the month of April, Oakland has struggled, and then uh, after that month, they can throw it out, yeah. and then they just start playing lights out. Zito off to a slow start, but Holder having a good year. You see the overall record since May 9th. Popped him up right side. Coming on is Merloni. Also, Victor Martinez there, and it's Victor Martinez. Well, on Wednesday, June 2nd, the Tribe salutes the Cleveland Senior Citizens with a special 12:05 game against the Rangers. And after the game, all seniors will have the opportunity to come on the field and stroll the bases. And if you would like some information for single game tickets, 216-420 hits. And as a matter of fact, we should invite one of our seniors. That's John Sanders' birthday, that June 2nd. Okay. So maybe he can come out here. We're leaving that day for Anaheim, and he can run the bases, John. We can help him around. <laughs> we'll walk him around. <laughs> <laughs> Which side do you want? He's Left watching side or right too. side? He's watching too. You know <laughs> you that. bet he is. He just threw something at the TV. <laughs> one ball and one strike on Damian Miller, the A's catcher. That's a strike. Miller last year caught 114 games for the Cubs. Hit nine home runs. He has... Then with Arizona, also Minnesota, 
good defensive yeah a solid guy solid behind the plate ended up trading Hernandez to San Diego who did a nice job in Oakland last year they got Kotze because Terrence Long who was an outfielder over there he ended up going back uh, to San Diego yeah. as well they continue to shuffle it seems like year after year well it's ball club in search of an identity out there on the west coast with the Giants playing across the bay they've, they've scuffled attendance wise right that's the key they're, they're pretty much like this a uh, mid uh, mid market team that cannot afford to hold on to your top superstars because they just can't afford yeah. that kind of money they're not drawing enough to where the ownership's going to pay a nice pitch on the inside corner cutter well, he has had the good fastball that a Cut fastball, as Rick called it, but that's his fourth strikeout. Everything has been hard. And, you know, this is a pitch that really uh, neutralizes right-handers. That fastball going in, it has a little run to it. If they want to swing, it's got a chance of jamming them. Check it out on our Buffalo Wild Wings. Wink cam right on the inside corner. Great pitch. And it's like the Indians. And when they do go out and make a sign, they can't make a mistake. Because, I mean, if you're going to go out and give up the money like they did to Eric Chavez, you got to be guaranteed that that guy's going to stay there, and he's going to play, and he's going to stay healthy. Well, and they're still talking about a possible move out there. I don't know where they would go, whether it would be down to San Jose or someplace else, Sacramento. The, the A's are stuck with a, a lease situation out there that is very similar to the one the Indians had at Old Municipal Stadium where the Browns got everything. And, right. and out there, the Oakland Raiders has, have everything. The A's don't get much revenue from playing in the Coliseum. So it's a huge problem. Billy Bean's done a nice job under the circumstances. Swing and a miss there. And it's one and two on a, another good breaking ball. Well, our crack staff, uh, once they found out that I played with his kid's dad, Ed, well, Crosby has 15 RBIs now. The best season for his dad. His dad has been in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, we'd like you, except for John Sanders. <laughs> To email the booth tonight during the telecast, just log on to www.fsnohio.com, enter your region, and click on the link to ask the crew a question. We'll pick out some of your questions and answer them on the air. Email the booth brought to you by cleveland.com. We know John Sanders has the weekend off. He's already in his computer emailing us. <laughs> he probably he, is. Well, he wants to make reservations to walk the bases, you know? <laughs> Hey, he's got some pull. Just call me. <laughs> yeah. Matt Lawton with a base hit. Indians with just two base hits. Lawton, a two-out single in the first. And Travis Astor, a leadoff single in the third. It's a taken at the knees, one and two. Yeah, this guy's, when he keeps the ball down around the knees, Mike, he's tough to hit. You gotta try and make him get that fastball up a little bit and uh, don't miss the mistake. Try to get Matt to chase the big curveball there. Outfield shaded Matt towards left. Big gap in right center field if you could plunk that gap. Off the plate. Very tantalizing there. It's full three and two. if he was saying was that high or outside or both well, either that or just wants to make sure that it's a full three count three and two yeah that was high that's that high strike that Gino will throw off the breaking ball and he got Matt Lawton right there and after that pitch away comes right back with that pitch inside a high fastball a little bit above the belt and gets Matt to swing through it. Strikeout number three for Zito. Out number two in the fourth inning. Two down. Here is Victor Martinez. Victor 0 for 1 tonight. Victor Martinez, another Indian who there's a drastic difference between Victor from the right side and from the left side. 
over 100 points difference. Jim, middle of the infield, who's going to take it? Third baseman calls for it, and Chavez handles it. Another one, two, three inning for Zito. Four in the books, no score from Jacob Field. Bundled up here at Jacob Field, a little chilly tonight. As we head to the fifth inning, blankets are out. Marcus Cataro, the A's second baseman, leads off. Cliff Lee has struck out four and walked the pair. And his fastball has been dynamite. Make that three walks, four strikeouts. Gattaro double off the left field wall his first time up. Almost scored Bobby Crosby, who was on first base, but a good play by Matt Lawton. Took a ball one hop off the wall. That comes off at an angle out there, too, Rick, doesn't it, where that yeah. wall juts out over there to almost to where the scoreboard is. That's right. You don't go directly for it. You play it on yeah. an angle. And it, it also does that in left center field when you're the center field. You can almost go back, and it's going to come back to you. One, two pitch. This one hit in the air to left, but Matt Lawton has room there. And there's one out. Well, every Tuesday is country music night here at Jacobs Field. It's supported by WGAR Radio. And Tuesdays will feature great contests, entertainment, plus live country music acts, such as Blake Shelton on the 1st of June. It'll be Billy Currington on June 8th. And then Josh Turner on July 6th. That's Tuesday as country music night down here at the ballpark. Eric Burns takes down low, ball one, Burns 0 for 2. He has grounded out and struck out tonight, hitting 3.04 now. And Cliff Lee sort of settled down the second time through the lineup. They were 3 for 7 off from the first time through, and 0 for 8 the second time with that one walk. So he has made his adjustments. Two zero pitch upstairs three balls and no strikes. Well, Cliff Lee has one thing he has done. Rick, he has given the ball club innings when he's gone out there. I mean, his shortest outing of the year was the first start he had in Minnesota when he really struggled. Yeah. Went four and a third well, innings. Other than that, everything has been over five innings, five and above. Well, he's kept his club in it and, and given him the opportunity to win. That's why he's 5-0. and oh. And normally, the offense has scored when he's been out there. But tonight, they have been shut down. And now you got to keep an eye with this guy at first base because he will run. He's one of the few A's that will take off. Well, and Kilty is a guy who can handle the bat. Hitting just 231, but he can, he will hit and run. He'll bunt. He'll do a number of things at the plate. Pretty good fastball hitter, so you got to be careful. Eric Burns, a perfect seven for seven. Trying to steal bases. Look out at the end of the dugout. CC. That must have got somebody in there. Coco Crisp. That must have got somebody. Well, he's pulled the first two pitches off late. And even though that screen is up, it still finds you in there, doesn't it? Or it knocked over some water on somebody. <laughs> oh, and two count. Moves him off the plate. Misses one and two. It'll be a base hit. So a walk and a base hit here in the fifth inning. And the A 
Rays have runners at first and second for Eric Chavez. This is only the second hit that the A's have when Flip Lee has been ahead in the count. And that one may be a little too much of the plate, but Kelsey put some good swings on the ball, gets a base hit. Hit number four for the A's. So two on with one out, and Eric Chavez at the plate. Missed away. Chavez last year with 29 home runs. The last three years he has averaged over 30 home runs and 100 runs batted in. But if he does have a problem, it is against left-handed pitching. He has hit just above 220 lifetime against lefties, so lefties have a good chance to get him if they can make the pitch. We'll see how he goes out there and tries to reach for that yeah. ball away. So Cliff Lee now ahead in the count, a ball and two strikes. Remain Die waiting on deck, and Lee has walked Die twice. Let's see if he can get Chavez into the double play. He's grounded into 10 of them already this year. It leads the American League. Up high, two and two. That is sometimes, let's say, a misleading statistic. But Chavez is a guy who hits, he's got a good line drive stroke. He hits a lot of hard ground balls. So you're susceptible yeah. to that double play. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Hit on the ground. Chop foul that time. Runners will return to the bag. Wind has picked up since this ball game started and blowing in at a pretty good clip now from right center towards home plate. Runners at first and second. Burns and Kilty, the base runners. Got him again. Good pitch by Cliff Lee, and that's the second time he has struck out Chavez. Two down. And he's had Chavez. Uh, all three times he's had him down in the count one and two and he's been able to strike him out the last two times. Good location. But he's not out of the woods yet because Jermaine Dye is up there. Big strong right handed hitter up there with two outs. But Lee deals the fastball. One thing Cliff Lee, and we talked about it between innings, is he's not, a, he's not afraid to go after you with his no, fastball. No, he's not. Matter of fact, he's like, he works at both sides of the plate, and then uh, everything stems off his fastball. Yeah, you're going to make an occasional mistake, but I think you're going to make more mistakes with your off-speed pitches, yeah. your breaking ball. Those are easier pitches to hang or leave up in the zone and not locate. It's easier to spot your fastball in and out and run that little cutter into right-handers than it is throwing that breaking ball. And you know that old saying that they say, if you're going to get beat, get beat with your best pitch, yep. and that's his fastball. Foul back. And it's one and two. Oakland so far tonight with runners in scoring position, 0 for 3, and Cliff Lee has three strikeouts. So that's what we were talking about. He's not afraid to go after hitters when he's in trouble. Die has walked twice, but he's in the hole right now. A ball and two strikes. Lee trying to get out of it here in the fifth. And he does. Another strikeout for Cliff Lee. His sixth. He strikes out. Chavez and Die back to back. The A's fail to score.
Coming here at Jacob Field, which is the Ford home run payoff inning, and Joan Weber of Brewster, Ohio, who registered at Countryside Ford, is our contestant tonight. If an Indian hits a home run, Joan will win a prize package consisting of two Indian tickets, passes for two to the Ford Pavilion before the game, and much more. Plus, she is automatically entered to win a Ford Escape at the end of the season, and you can enter by sending a postcard to the address that you see on the screen with your name and address. Two balls, no strikes on Casey Blake, who has homered five times so far this year. Two of his last four base hits have been homers. And I wonder if Zito hasn't really thrown that curveball a lot tonight and for strikes. And I wonder if it's cool enough where that uh, the baseball is a little slick. Tough to get a grip on the ball. Now we really haven't seen consistently throwing that curveball for a strike. There's the high fastball, and he walks Casey Blake on four straight. Well, we said between innings, Rick. Cliff Lee has done a whale of a job tonight, worked his way out of a jam. Now it's time for the Indian offense to go to work. Yeah. Got to try and find a way to get through here to Barry Zito. That's his first walk, so they have their leadoff man aboard. Second time they have done that tonight. Back in the third, it was a half and a single. Here's Jody Garrett. Jody, a ground out to the first baseman in the second inning. Go to first, but... Casey Blake not far off. You know, usually the early part of the ball game is a time the Tribe likes to score. Middle part has not been there uh, from the sixth inning on. Offensively, they have had their problems. It has been tough. Get high in the air to left, but with that win, no chance. And now Jermaine Dye coming in. Well, so didn't even get the medium right field. So one out, and Lou Merloni will stand in against the lefty, Mark or Barry Zito. This series will continue with a night game tomorrow, fireworks night tomorrow, and then a day game on Sunday. Only time that Oakland will be here at Jacobs Field this year. Indians will make two trips no, no, other Oakland way around. Comes, yeah, comes, comes back in here. We, yeah. uh, I think it's right uh, before the break or something like that. And we only make the one trip to Oakland this year. That's right. We go twice to Seattle and Anaheim. That's right. And once to Texas and Oakland. Again, throw to first. Matter of fact, Oakland will be here July 9th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. And then we go into the break. So it's the last three games before the All-Star break head back west and go to Seattle after the break. Yes. Yep. Pitch to Merloni up high. 1-0. and oh. Indians have not announced the starting pitcher for tomorrow night. Rich Harden will go for Oakland. Jason Davis and Tim Hudson on Sunday, so Harden and Hudson and Zito, we don't see Mark Mulder. Throw to second, and it's a good one. And they cut down Jody Garrett. Well, they were banking on right there, maybe with a 1-0 count, they'll find, try and get a change up or a breaking ball. Casey didn't get a good jump over there. It was thrown out easily, but you'll see. Up the perfect throw, and he's out by five feet. Casey Blake, the base runner, and he is cut down 2-4. Two, two balls and no strikes on Lou Merloni. Indians will likely make an announcement after the ball game as to who the starter is going to be for tomorrow night. Well, it's either going to be Chad Durbin or Joe Dolly, the guy that they have down in Buffalo. Jam shot. Chavez throws him out. That is now eight in a row for Barry Zito. Five in the books, no score. For Scott Hatterberg, and the first pitch misses low from Cliff Lee. That is his 94th pitch. Barry Zito, through five, has thrown 58. Wow, big difference, yeah. huh? Well, Zito has walked one. 
And that coming in the last inning. Cliff Lee has walked four. Cliff has six punch outs. Zito has three. It's been a nice matchup. These two going at it, these two lefties. Popped him up again. Right on home plate. And Casey Blake will make the call. Second time that Atterberg has popped up. Well, this time Blake makes the catch, but last time up right. he popped out to Victor Martinez. Well, Jacobs Field Team Shop is your source of authentic Indians memorabilia. And you can shop the new items in the clubhouse collectible area of the store. Clubhouse collectibles consist of game used merchandise as provided by the Cleveland Indians Clubhouse, and all 100% of the proceeds go to Cleveland Indians charity. First pitch to Carrazzo in and over first strike. Fastball at the knees. There you go, but there's your drill set for, All the, right. for the summer. Get your summer started off right. I got Sanders? Okay, I'll keep that. He's got two chances of seeing that. And slim. <laughs> Indians giving away a barbecue drill set tonight. Just in time for the holiday weekend. Strikeout number seven for Cliff Lee. Oh, I didn't waste any time. A good, look at that ball had some run to it, didn't it? And had look uh, another cut fastball away. Gets Durazo to swing and miss. Two down, and Damian Miller fouls it back out of play. Not only does he have seven strikeouts, Rick, but the, the pop-ups tell you, too, that, that that ball is getting on top of these Oakland A's hitters very quickly. So Lee has a good live fastball tonight. He was ready, but Miller was not. Well, he likes to work quickly on that mound, and Oakland's trying to slow him down a little bit. Miller tonight has grounded into a double play and struck out. And he got him again. That's time with a breaking ball. That's number eight for Cliff Lee. We go to the bottom of the sticks. Still no score. Coverage of Cleveland Indians baseball on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings Grill and Bar, where you can enter to win your own Buffalo Wild Wings Century Harley Davidson motorcycle and by your Cleveland and Akron area Lexus dealers. Beautiful shot of the moon here as the skies have cleared. Cool evening. No score. A good ball game here as we head to the bottom of the six. No score. Only six hits in this game. And Tito and Lee matching each other pitch for pitch. Oakland has left seven stranded. The Indians have left just one. That was back in the first inning. Big curveball. And really, Rick, as you said, Zito's almost been doing it with That's one pitch. Well, that and the changeup. Yeah. He's been doing it with his fastball changeup. But his curveball, he has not really thrown for a strike. That there it is. is. He doubled up. And I think that's one of the first times I remember he doubled up uh, with that breaking ball all night. Well, because Hafner got a 0-2 base hit off the last time. Had the base hit in the fourth inning, but was erased on a double playground ball. Just missed off the plate, two and two. Hafner, then Escobar, and back to the top of the order here in the sixth inning. Ronnie Belliard would be the third hitter. Two balls, two strikes. That's outside in the dirt. Four straight curve balls yep. to him now. You would think now, if you're, you look at this situation.
situation, if you're the hitter, you got to think he's going to throw your fastball, don't you? I would with well, right-handed yes. hitters coming well, up. Well, you would think so. He doesn't want to walk it, but you know what? He he will throw the curveball. He's got command of his curveball. Yeah. He'll throw it. Absolutely. Right? See what he does here. Fastball away. Woo. Didn't miss by much. That was a good at bat by half. Sure was. You know, I mean, that's the patience to lay off of that pitch. Now, that's a tough one to lay off, too, because it's right there, tantalizing. You give it up, and you can see he hits the target, but he wanted half to chase it. He didn't do it. Check it out in our Buffalo Wild Wings wing cam. And you can see it was it was a good six inches outside. So a nice job to draw that leadoff walk. Second straight inning. The Indians have done that. Zeno's been able to handle that. Casey Blake cut down trying to steal a base. This one popped up. Escobar pops up trying to sacrifice, and there's one out. Now, when you're in a game like this, it's the little things that you have to do. And this is a situation they haven't been swinging the bats well. You can't pop it up. you got to try and get that one down. I know you try to do it. So you'll see Chavez makes the easy play. So now it's up to Belliard. So Escobar not able to sacrifice, throw to first. Looks like it was a fairly easy pitch to bunt. It was down, but Alex Escobar just kind of dropped the head of the bat underneath it. Chops to short, Crosby to second one, and there'll be no relay as Belliard hits into the fielder's choice. He's at first base, but now with two outs. Well, Tribe fans, you know where to turn for the most in-depth news information and insight when it comes to your Indians. It's Tribe Time, presented by Mike's Hard Lemonade. Tribe Time starts a half hour before all our Indian broadcasts on the next Tribe Time. I'll tell Worldwide Wahoo with Matt Miller and Boneheads in Baseball. They're not talking about us. <laughs> they might <laughs> they be. Might be. <laughs> Omar chases the high fastball and fouls it back. Indians have had the leadoff runner on in the third, the fifth, and the sixth. But so far, not able to take advantage. Well, only two singles, and uh, both singles coming off the bats of left hand. Yep. Lawton has one, and so does Travis Hatton. So he has handled the righties. in the hole, 0 and 2. <laughs> Belliard leaned a little bit, and Zito will get him back to the bag. started and then stopped. Give him a little bluff right there. Took two quick steps. So sometimes you figure in a situation, 0-2, two, two out. Take a chance at stealing the base. If not, Omar can come back and lead it off next inning. paying attention and when you're ahead like this he could take a chance instead of throwing a pitch out just give a catcher a nice high fastball and a good pitch to throw on see what they do here oh and two Belliard with the lead not a very big lead not going that pitch in the dirt gets away from Miller and Belliard will stay at second as Miller over near the on deck circle to handle it it's a wild pitch First one of the year. Zito. And there's that curveball down, and it deflects off of Miller's glove, and 
ricochets over the on deck circle. So now he is in scoring position if Omar can come through with a two out hit. Say the arms uh, out there. Dye's got a good arm uh, in right field. Kelty you could probably run on and left. Burns is the average arm. Laid off the high fastball. This is only the second at bat the Indians have had tonight with a runner in scoring position. They're 0 for 1 tonight. There's Kelty. Burns in center and Jermaine Dye with a cannon arm in right. He's got a as good an arm as there is around. Got him with a breaking ball and the inning will end. So Barry Zito strikes out Omar Vizquel to end the six. It is 0-0 here at Texas. Cliff Lee deals low to Bobby Crosby, who leads off here in the seventh inning of a scoreless ball game. Indians with just two base hits. The A's have four. And Cliff Lee has really been dominant here tonight. Eight strikeouts. Well, he has tied a season high. He also had eight strikeouts against the Red Sox back on May 12th, if you recall. Again, with eight here tonight. Has walked four. And is over the 100 pitch mark. 105 now for Cliff Lee. But he seems, Rick, right now, coming out here in the seventh, to be just as strong as he was in the first inning. See how far Eric Wedge and Carl Willis will go with Cliff Lee here tonight. Well, it's not like he's been in a lot of problems no. at all. Full count, Cliff looking at Rob Drake, the home plate umpire, thought he might have had one there. As we look at the Indian dugout, Carl Willis, the pitching coach. And that's just inside. So that's the fifth walk. Cliff Lee has walked five and struck out eight. Take a look at our Wendy's Trivia question for tonight. In 1971, the Indians traded Sam McDowell to the Giants for Gaylord Perry and what infielder? See if we can figure that one out by next inning. Oh, we got it. No contest, no, no problem. No problem. All righty. Well, now Carl Willis will take a trip to the mound, and there is activity in the Indian bullpen. Well, they figure they just want to get that 10 up. It's uh, Raphael Betancourt. So he's going to take a little stroll, give the bullpen time to get loose. Well, the five walks also tie a career high, so he has tied highs in both walks and strikeouts tonight, which add up to a lot of pitches. Yeah. Now the umpire is going to go out there and bust it up. Well, we'll see what Ken Maka does too, Rick, as we get to the late stages of this ball game with the number nine hitter at the plate. And the runner at first base with nobody out. Well, they don't look like they sacrifice a whole lot. Like they only have three on the season. Casey and this guy has one. Casey playing even with the back. The runner being held over there by Merloni. Let's see what Scutaro does. He's showing bunt, and now Cliff Lee will back off. But you're, I mean, you're late in the ball game. Your guy's he's twirling a gem. You got to try and get him a run, don't you? Number nine hitter. Absolutely. Well, that's what Eric tried to do in the sixth inning. After after head walk, but Escobar popped up the bunt attempt. This one popped up, but it's going to get down. And Cliff Lee will have just one play. That's too bad because he yep. could have went to second base. It slipped. His back foot slipped, or he would have went to second base. Look at it. You can see he's upset. But at least he got the out. It'll go with the sacrifice. He came off the mound, and then Cliff's a pretty good athlete out there, and will make a good throw to second. But watch his back foot. Right here, his left one slipped, and he had plenty of time to go to second base. 
But once he slipped, he said, I got to go get the out. Made the right choice. When it went in the air, I thought maybe Cliff Lee might have a chance after it, but it was not butted high enough, and now Victor will go to the mound. Well, that's what that's going to do it, I guess, because here comes Eric West. That gave him enough time to get ready. It's too bad because this kid tossed a gem, huh? Now the fans not real thrilled with the fact that Eric is coming to the mound, but they're going to go right-hander against right-hander here. Cliff Lee looks like he wanted to stay in this ball game too, and he's going to get a very well-deserved hand as he leaves in a tie ball game, a scoreless game here, having allowed just four base hits. And the Indians will bring in Raphael Betancourt to face Eric Burns with one out. We'll tell you about Betancourt after we come back. Now back here at Jacobs Field, Cliff Lee not real thrilled about being taken out of the ball game. He had a heck of a night here tonight, Rick. Went six and a third innings. Tied a career high with eight strikeouts, although he did walk five. And the pitch count at 109, but... He said at the beginning of the inning, he seemed strong. Yeah, he was really never in much trouble. He did. Uh, he left uh, seven Oakland A's stranded. And you know what? I don't blame him. I mean, he's out there. He wanted this ball game. There he is. He's, <laughs> hi, Mom. <laughs> he's watching back home, I guess. Well, Mom, well, let's hope they can come up and uh, get out of this inning. He did a whale of a job here tonight. And let's see if Betancourt can get out of it. Betancourt appearing for the 23rd time. Rafi has only walked one guy in his 22 and two-thirds innings and has 27 strikeouts. So he has been around the plate. You know he's going to throw strikes. Problem for Cliff Lee, that runner at second base is his responsibility. So he can lose the ball game. He can't win it at this point. And Eric Burns is 0 for 2 with a walk. Betancourt ready and deals outside, ball one. Bobby Kilty, a switch hitter. Waiting on deck. One out. Set up away. And that pitch right on the corner at the knees. Good pitch by Betancourt. It's one ball and one strike. Court, of course, flip flop with Jose Jimenez. Pitched the eighth inning last night, set up away again as Martinez, and that pitch at the knees on the outside corner. Funny, One and right. two. When he was the closer, they could never get to him. Right. And get some use, and he's probably been their most consistent reliever. So now they figured, all right, seventh or eighth inning is when we got to use him. So they're going to come right back, and he's been in back to back games now. Well, as Eric said tonight, we've got to try something. We've got to looking for combinations and see if we can find the right one. It worked last night. One ball, two strikes. Little chopper towards third. Charged by Blake. On the run. Throw. And an oh! Pulled him off the bag. Threw on the run. A nice stop by Lou Merloni. But Burns beat it out. That's going to go as a base hit, but it's a play. Look at that. Burns is on the run, and he can get down the line. It's just that Casey realized how fast he was getting down that line and then had to rush the throw. See, he's out of the box in a hurry because he had to reach for the pitch. You know, Kenny Mock always says this guy he plays like his hair's on yeah, fire. It, it, <laughs> and a few other things, and I'm telling you. I'll tell you what, as he was going down, that helmet yeah. was on his nose, and he beats it out yep. for an infield hit. He is. Classic overachiever, no question about it. But now, runners at first and second, and the switch hitter. Breaking ball, misses down low. That's a, another play that could have and should have been made, Rick. The Indians couldn't turn a double play earlier that, fortunately, Cliff Lee was able to work out of that jam. Now, Bobby Kelty now from the left side hitting just 193 this year in his 57 at bat. There was talks where he may uh, just get stay from the right side and not even hit from the left side. And he has yet to scrap it. 
83 mile an hour fastball at the knees. One ball and one strike on Kelsey. Infield double play depth, outfield straight away. And not too deep with that wind blowing in from right center towards home plate. No score. Rafael Betancourt very deliberate. Guilty runs pretty well from the left side and also, so it might be a little difficult to double up. He's hit into three of them this year. Two-one pitch. Chase the high fastball, and it's two balls and two strikes. That was a pretty good pitch there. Elevated above the belt, got him to chase it. playing it and does a terrific job and Betancourt was able to get over there and they get the out the runners do advance now they will walk Chavez intentionally but what a play right there that saved a run great play no question about it that was a run saver Eric Chavez the league home run leader will be walked the left-handed hitter to load the bases but face the right-hander Jermaine Dye. Well a play that should have been made the one that Casey Blake had and a play that you shouldn't, shouldn't have been shouldn't made. Have been that's made. exactly <laughs> right. That's one way of looking that's at it. That's the way this game evens out. Well, when you're in games like this and you're playing defensively, everything's in tune. You know you can't yep. afford to make a mistake or, uh, or do anything. And you are on your toes and ready for everything. So Lou Merloni, who has saved the Indians a run here, will play deep now at first base. The base is loaded. The infield will move back. Blake back at third base. Belliard in his usual spot on the outfield grass at second. And the outfield straight away and deep. Dye has walked twice and struck out. Strike called over the outside corner. Bettencourt is very deliberate when he comes set to the point of, I think, sometimes upsetting the timing of hitters, Rick, when he waits so long that the hitters can kind of freeze themselves That's sitting there. true. You get caught on your heels because he comes set, and then you just really never know. And a lot of times when you're on the base, it can affect the base runner as well. That fouled off, and he's quickly ahead, 0-2. Sometimes you wonder why more guys maybe don't back out against him. But it's 0-2 on Jermaine Dye with the bases loaded, two outs. The A's have stranded seven base runners already tonight. They've got the bases loaded here in the seventh. Strike three call. He's got it. Rafael Batancourt comes in to strike out Jermaine Dye. Got a good defensive play from Lou Merloni. And the A's leave him loaded here in the seventh. Cleveland Indians coverage on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you by Liberty Ford. Don't miss Liberty's Ford Family Appreciation Sale 
going on right now at the Liberty Ford in your town by the Ohio Department of Public Safety. If you're not buckled up, what's holding you back? Well, if you like pitchers duels, you've got one here tonight. And Raphael Betancourt did a whale of a job coming in in relief of Cliff Lee. The infield hit. Got Bobby Kilty on a great play by Lou Merloni. They walk Chavez to face die, and he struck out Jermaine Dye. Matt Lawton, line drive, face hit. So Lawton opens the seventh, throw back to the bag. Oh, he just got back. Took the big turn, and Jermaine Dye with that shotgun out there and right, almost cut him down. Well, he jumped on Zito's first pitch, and you can see Instead of just throwing it in, he goes behind him and almost had him. Boy, awfully close right there. Look at he slipped. Well, Matt walking it off. Of course, he had to sit out a couple of ball games, Rick. With that hip, the right. hip problem, and hope he's okay right now. He had to dive back to the bag. Tells you a little something about Jermaine Dye's arm, though, doesn't it? You don't think many... Don't get too antsy with Jermaine Dye. He's just taking time to get those gloves off and get ready to go. We'll see here now in the bottom of the seventh. They've had their leadoff man aboard four times in this ballgame. The third, fifth, sixth, and now the seventh. Yeah. And they just have not been able to do anything with Only the third base hit off Barry Zito. Matt Lawton has two. Yeah. Travis Hafner. All left-handers. So the left-handers have the three base hits. Here's Victor Martinez. Has slide out and popped up. Bach. Yeah. This one up. He bought. They're going to call a Bach. Yes, they are. They're going to call a Bach on him. And uh, over at first base, Brian Rungi made the call before he came set. And he may have flinched a little bit. You know, trying to rush that delivery, keeping the runners there. Let's take a look. Watch his hands. See it? Did you see him flinch a little bit? He moved. They caught him. Move, yeah. yeah, I mean, he started and sort of stopped. And uh, he was all over Brian Rungi. So that'll go as a ball. That'll give the Indians a, a great opportunity now. A man on second with nobody out. That is the first ball of the year. For Zito. Talk about three generations of baseball players when you talk about the Bell and Boone. The Rungies are three, three generations. generations. Ed Rungi and of course Paul, Ed's son, and now Brian Rungi. So three generations of major league umpires. That's a good trivia yeah. question there. Victor? Trying to take it to right field that time. There was no pitch either. So they started all over again on a 0-0 count. No balls, no strikes. Now it's 0-1. Well, he tried to go the other way, didn't he? Go to that right side of the diamond. We'll see what he does. Zito does to try and combat that. A lot of times he's got that big slow curveball or a changeup to try and get maybe Victor to pull the ball on the ground. Once again, try to take a shot to the right side. Well, now you got to go for yourself and try and put the ball in play. Gave it two shots trying to get it that way. Cosby, way back, now moves up a couple of steps, but he was on the grass at short. Chavez pretty much guarding the line over at third. Look at that. That's like an emergency hat. He's still trying to go the other way, isn't he? There was no turn, nothing, just flat-footed. This is all hands right here. Yep. High fastball, just flick it off. That's a ball, Vic. <laughs> Look at that. Holy smokes. He's still trying to get him over. Still 0-2, Watton dancing around. And the breaking ball runs off the plate inside. A ball and two strikes. Victor tonight has fly to left, pop to third base. But he has 
been an RBI machine since taking over in that number four spot. 28 runs batted in in 21 ball games. Another curveball and laid off. Well, he's really staying in on the hands, isn't he? All the fastballs and the breaking balls are even inside. He is not going to give him any swinging room to let him go that other way. But he has worked the count to two and two. Cliff Lee, a very interested spectator here. 122 is the count, two and two. That ball is foul. second base a lot of times games like this turn on one pitch yep. or one mistake that the other team can take advantage of ace couldn't do it in their half of the inning got breaking it. ball got him yep good effort by victor martinez but barry well, zito just dropped in a hook right there and that was a tough one and watch pitch. where it stayed it sure was inside part of the play Big, high, slow hook drops in there right, boy, oh boy. So slow. And a lot of bite to it. And gets a call inside corner so they cannot get locked in the third. Still got to be aware out at second base for any ball in the dirt. He has one wild pitch tonight. Casey Blake up there. 0 for 1 against Zito tonight. He struck out in the second inning, walked in the fifth, and was thrown out trying to steal second base. Boy, he has done the job. Right-handers 0 for 14 off him tonight. Now the only base hits coming from two left-handers. Matt Lawton has two, and Travis Astor has one. Trying to shorten up Lawton is what they're trying to do, keep him close to second base. Inside, ball one. Well, that wind has really picked up. Boy, it sure has. Since the ball game started, it was about 10 miles an hour when the game started. It's got to be at least 15 right now, and it has really cooled off 2-0 oh. like the temperature is supposed to go down into the low to middle 40s tonight feels like it's already here Barry Zito working on a three hit shutout here Lawton dancing around the pitch that's a strike, two and one. Didn't give in there, did he? 2-0, change up. Cy Young winner two years ago in the American League. Part of a trio of quality starters in Oakland. Inside, just missed, three and one. Not getting much either pitcher really on the inside part of the plate tonight from Rob Drake, the home plate umpire. Well, he may be looking at it this way. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to try and make my perfect pitch. He's got first base open. He's got a left-hander on deck, although the left-handers have all the hits in tonight's game. See if he comes back with another change. Went inside with it and walked and walked it. Second walk for Casey Blake. Runners at first and second. And Jody Garrett. Well, let's take another look at Tonight's Wendy's trivia question. In 1971, the Indians traded Sam McDowell to the Giants for Gaylord Perry and what infielder? I'm thinking it might be uh, Frank Duffy. That's the only one I can think of. Good call, Art. Big Frank, who yep. now lives uh, out in Tucson, Arizona. And he was part of the, the tribe back when we wore the red uniforms. Yep. And we'll have that turn back to clock day <laughs> at 75. Ray Fossey, who broadcast with Oakland. 
was around. Yeah. That will be part of the Reds weekend coming up. Strike call to Jody Garrett. Jody tonight, 0 for 2. First and second, one out. No score. This has been a dandy. Yes, it has. off the plate, a ball and a strike. Jody Garrett snapped a bit of a slump last night with three base hits. Outside. And seems like Tito is working much more cautiously here than he did earlier in the ball game, not quite as aggressive. Yeah, you're right, because that one run could be the ball game out there. He's gonna make sure every pitch counts and has a purpose. Ooh. I was gonna say, he was sitting in a pretty good spot there, two and one, he got the feeling he had to throw him a strike. Well, he did, and he fouled it yeah. off. Those are the pitches, like, when you're going good, like, you seem to find a way to get a base hit. I think Jody in his last at-bat had a pitch that he popped up to right field that he felt he should have hit. Lou Merloni, right-handed hitter, waiting on deck. Lefty against lefty here. Two balls, two strikes. Strike three call, and that will do it for Jody Garrett. Strikeout number six. And made the perfect pitch. So both the strikeouts in this inning, the one to Victor inside the curveball, a fastball nails the outside corner. Jody knew it right away. Excellent pitch to come back after Jody had the count in his favor. Two balls and a strike. He fouled off the fastball and he took the other one. So now, Gino a chance to get out of it. him up on the infield right side, Hatterberg, and the second baseman, Scataro. It will be the second baseman who makes the play. Indians fail to score here in the seventh. Still scoreless. Burgo for three against Cliff Lee will face the right-hander for the first time tonight. And Bettencourt deals a strike. One ball and one strike. Now you can see the pitcher and catcher talking situations on hitters when they add runners in scoring position. He pitched beautifully to get out of it, didn't he? When they had second base and nobody out, you know, able to get out of it. One ball and one strike. Good breaking ball there. Durazo and Miller to follow here in the eighth inning. Only eight hits in this ball game. Oakland has five, the Indians with just three. Off Barry Zito. Indian pitchers tonight have struck out nine and walked six. And Rick the A's have stranded 10. Two pitch, just a bit low, three and two. Betancourt, whose control has been impeccable, almost impeccable. Had just one walk coming in and had a, an intentional right. walk here. That's right. So he's only walked two batters all year. Has a full count here. And that's up high, so he walks Atterberg to start off the eighth inning. Well, tonight on the Best Damn Sports Show, period, we talked to 
NFL on Fox analyst Jimmy Johnson. Also, NASCAR driver Jimmy Johnson. Not the same person about the Coca-Cola 500, plus Mark Grace on his future. The best, best damn sports show period on Fox Sports Net. Jimmy and Jimmy. Jimmy with a Y, Jimmy with an IE. On the show tonight, here's Durazo. Bit low, and it's 1-0. Activity out in the Indian bullpen. Right-hander up and throwing. Matt Miller begins to loosen up the side armor. That's down low, and now quickly Victor Martinez out to talk to Betancourt. Wants to go, let's go. Don't try, don't start nibbling and try and get too fine in this situation. He was ahead of Hattieberg and ended up walking him. That really has been Betancourt's strong point coming in and throwing strikes. Two oh pitch. So high in the air to right. Back goes Escobar at the track. And that ball, it's caught. Girl, a leaping catch. Up and over to Rob Durazo. It looked like it would have been out of here. Boy, what a play by Jody Garrett. It also looked like either one of them might have had an opportunity to go at it and jump. And Jody Garrett being aggressive, playing in just his fourth game in center field took charge and you watch him get back to the wall there's a great shot he jumps up times it beautifully it may not have gone out of the ballpark but it would have been awfully close there would have been extra bases and Jody makes a nice catch to retire Durazo you can see how upset he is he just missed it yeah you got one upset and another guy thrilled he stayed in the park and he made a nice play you can thank Jody Garrett, you can thank the wind, I think, for that one, too. That's that true. wind really knocked it down. Any other night, that might have been out of here, but a great play by Jody Garrett. One out, and here's Damian Miller. Take that back. Billy McMillan will come on to pinch hit for Miller. That one hit high in the air to right. Back goes... Escobar now coming in. Two out, two down. Yeah, you better slice through it. That wind uh, knocked that down a little bit as well. So Jody Garrett making the good play, and then the pop-up to right field by McMillan, the pinch hitter, and here's Crosby now with two out. Ball in at the letters off the plate, ball one. Now, Carl Willis is going to take a quick trip out to the mound and talk to Bettencourt about something, maybe how to face Bobby Crosby. They do it, but first game of a series, they will meet with the club. Go over all the hitters. The pitchers will have their meeting. Carl will take charge of it. Go over the hitters. The defense buddy will have those guys and tell them how they're going to pitch them and how where we should play them. Maybe just to remind Raphael Bencourt. Well, the thing in this stage of the ball game, too, Rick. You don't want to make a mistake middle of the plate and give him something right. he can turn on. Right. Uh, I think that first fastball was inside. As we mentioned earlier, he's off the plate and yeah. he's open, and he likes to, you know, I think right there it looks like he, he may have a hard time reaching that pitch away, and that's right where Victor's going. 
That one came in. It's going to be fair. Matt Lawton will run it down and get it quickly back to the infield. Boy, the location of there, he really missed badly. That'll go as a double because Victor Martinez was sitting away. Let's watch it and throw it down when we get in, if we could, guys, in the truck. You see where Victor's sitting away? He was sitting out over here where he wanted his glove. That ball comes back into here, and that's why it goes off the wall. Totally missed, and you're right. Right after Carl went out, I guarantee he said go outside, and that just missed location. Yep. Another good play by Matt Lawton, though, who he was able to get that ball one off and keep Hatterberg from scoring, and that's going to do it for Rafael Betancourt. We'll see the side-arming right-hander Pat Miller come into the ball game, and he will face the number nine hitter. We'll see who it is. But we are scoreless here at Jacobs Field in the top of the eighth inning. We'll tell you about Miller when we come back. Nothing but goose eggs here at Jacobs Field. But the A's threatening again in the eighth inning. They have left two runners on in the first, two in the second, two in the fifth. They left the bases loaded in the seventh. And they've got a pair on here in the eighth for Matt Miller. Miller appearing for the fifth time this year in his five and a third innings. A couple of walks, eight strikeouts. Coming on to face Guitara. They had the situation back in the second inning where they had a two-out double and put runners at second and third. They were able to get out of it with Cliff Lee. Outside ball one. On the corners, Blake and Merloni playing even with their respective bags at third and first. That one popped up. Merloni over near the A's dugout as Rude makes the catch. So Matt Miller comes in and gets the final out here in the eighth inning. The A's leave a pair on again. And the A's fail to score thanks to Jody Garrett. And the fine play against the wall. It's nothing, nothing going. Barry Zito still in the ball game as this game moves to the bottom of the eighth inning. He's thrown 91 pitches. <laughs> Fouled off by Travis Astor. Astor has singled and walked. Adam Melhus, the new catcher. A pinch hit for Damian Miller. Well, it should be no surprise that the Oakland starter definitely lead the league, and he got hit right there, breaking ball. Again, the leadoff man aboard. That is four straight innings now for the Indians. And what do you think you're going to see here? Well, let's see what happens here. <laughs> the last time, after Hafner walked in the sixth inning, Escobar up there to punt, popped it up. And Coco Crisp will come out now. We're in the eighth inning, and the Indians seriously looking for runs now. A run. Yeah, half the run base all three times tonight. So he did his job. Now, you still got to put the bun on. You got some speed. Coco over there. Escobar popped it up his last time, and this one goes foul. Joel Skinner flashing signs to Escobar and to Coco Chris. Indians had the leadoff runner on in the third inning, again in the fifth, in the sixth, in the seventh and now in the eighth. So the last four innings, they've had the leadoff runner aboard and have not been able to do anything. That one, fun and a good one. Go. That does it, so this time Escobar able to come through with the sacrifice. Coco Chris down to second base. There you go. Job well done. You can see that bat had out in front of home plate, and he left it there. It's, it's better because it gets it. It was a high fastball, and he was able to stay on top of and just keep it out there. Good job. Yeah. 
They're hoping a guy can get a base knock right here between Belliard and Vizquel. Yep. Combined, they are 0 for 6 tonight against Barry Zito. Well, he hasn't given up a hit to the right-handers yet. 0 for 15, our right-handers. There's Ricardo R uh, Rincon up and getting loose. Crisp at second base, one out. And almost hit Belliard. He had to move out of the way in a hurry. He's giving Belliard the gap in right center field and off the line in right. And again. They are really crowding Belliard. You know, it's funny. In the first uh, three at bats, they were throwing him a lot of soft stuff, getting him out on. But now you've got a runner in scoring position. So he's trying to he get the same thing with that man on second with nobody out last night. And Victor yep. stayed in there. There's a soft stuff. Change up. But Belliard's count in his favor, 3-0, and I'm sure he'll have a green light in this situation if he wants to swing. And now they're just going to go put him on. Okay. Keep the double play alive. So the intentional walk, Belliard will head down to first base. Omar Vizquelo for three tonight against Zito has grounded out, lined out, and struck out. Kurt Young is going to come out and talk things over. Well, you need a lot of local minutes, national minutes. How about unlimited nights and weekends? Or mobile to mobile minutes. You name it, we've got it. We've got a calling plan to suit your needs. Also, you've got that right. They're going to get on the same page. Now Crosby's coming in. He wants to talk. Coming in to play tonight, Omar was two for six lifetime against Zito. He is 0 for three tonight. Indians with just three base hits and all three from left-handed hitters. Omar kills bunt. And it's over for a strike. He might have been looking to, to surprise him in bunt, but he's got the curveball, maybe looking for a fastball yeah. inside. Chavez was at the bag, even with the bag, and he remains there. Omar fouled it off. Came up with a fastball that time, and Omar is down 0-2. Runners at first and second, one out. Crisp and Belly are at the base runners. Omar again pops it up. Which will get into the first row behind the dugout, and it remains 0-2. Indians, as you look at Zito, pitch count now over 100 at 102. Their lowest hit outing so far this year, four against the Twins in April on the 15th. They have three tonight. That's headed towards right field, knocked down by the second baseman, Scudero, and he makes the play on Vizquel. If Omar could have gotten a little bit more on it, he just didn't drive it. And Scudero was able to make the play. Yeah, he was going to his left. And he realized he was going to get there. He was going to pop down and try and go to second base. But instead of getting a force, wisely took the play at first base for out number two. Jody's thinking about maybe taking that wide turn. Here's Matt Lawton, two for three. Off 
Zito tonight. And that pitch hangs high, ball one. strikes and two outs with two on. They are wild producers. Matt Lawton has had some good swings off Dito tonight. Well, it's been every other pitch. It's been fastball, curveball, start him off curveball, so he just had the fastball he fouled off. Here he comes back with that hook. There it was, just missed. Full count now, three and two. Victor Martinez waiting on deck. If Lawton can get aboard. Here's the payoff pitch. High ball for he walks and the bases are loaded. That was a good at bat, Matt Lawton. But they didn't give in to him. He went with the fastball, tried to paint it, left it upstairs, and it's up to Victor Martinez now with two outs. And the Indian Jet have a hit from the right side of the plate. Ricardo Rincon continues to throw in the bullpen, or does he? Almost looks there now. Now who's going to the mound to talk to Zito? Looks like the pitching coach out in the bullpen was telling Ricardo that that was enough. Or either that, or he, he told him he was ready. I'm not too sure, but they're gonna. It looks like they're gonna let. Well, I think he was up getting loose, and maybe for that situation, if it did come to Matt Lawton, yeah, and he decided not to go to him, so he's gonna sit him down. And he figured, all right, I'm gonna just stay with Zito. So Zito will face Martinez because Ricardo was on the mound, and the coach came said something to him, and now you see Rincon with his jacket on again so it's going to be Barry Zito right here against Victor Martinez with the bases loaded and the game on the line curveball strike one same one he got him on last time for strike three that curveball inside Victor probably thought that one was in but he didn't give him any breathing room last at bat did he man on second nope. and nobody out now he got the bases full and two out one pitch high one ball and one strike Kenny Maka the A's manager in the first base dugout a lefty against the switch hitter Victor Martinez That's another good cut fouled straight back one and two and you've seen a lot of the hitters follow him straight back today. There's uh, Bradford up and throwing, and he comes about scrapes his knuckles off yeah. the mound, doesn't he? Uh, Victor. Victor's got a battle now. Zito with a season high now, 112 pitches. He's still got to make one more good one to get out of this inning. 
leaves it high, it's two and two. See, the thing in that situation, when he wants to throw that curveball with two strikes, you can't throw a good one and throw it down in the dirt and take a chance at, you know, bouncing that ball. So maybe that's why they stuff that pitch upstairs a little bit. Yeah, at this point in the ball game with that runner at third base. Line drive foul. Low bridge, Coco Crisp is up there at third base. He had to get down in a hurry. Well, I think Victor might have been looking in there because uh, he just let it fly. Watch Coco. Get down. <laughs> Victor 0 for 3 tonight. Had the double clutch on that off-speed pitch, able to stay alive. That's about right, double clutch. When he's throwing that fastball anywhere, 86, 85, 86 miles on that curveball can come in there at 70 to 72. The variance is uh, huge to sit back and wait for it. It seems like it's never going to yep. get there. Sixth pitch of the at bat, that last one, the third foul. Breaking ball, just inside, full count now. Three balls, two strikes, and two out. The bases are loaded. Something's got to give. Coco Crisp at third. Ronnie Belliard at second. And Matt Lawton down at first. And it's Comes down here, or could come down to one pitch. The fans are on their feet, they're in it. This cat and mouse game going here as Zito and Malhu's trying to get together on the sides. Victor Martinez trying to stay loose at the plate. pitch and Victor strikes out the Indians lead the bases loaded here in the eighth inning so after eight it's still no score at Jenkins Field well you want to talk about gut Barry Zito full count bases loaded throws the circle change and you can see it just coming out deep in his hand goes down and away and Victor looking for some express every pitch was inside to him in that at bat except the three two pitch he went down and away and that's some kind of pitching right there Good battle by Victor Martinez, but that's the way you win a Cy Young Award right there. That's exactly right. Didn't throw him a change up that whole at bat until he got to the 3-2 count. Jose Jimenez, the fourth Indian pitcher of the night. Cliff Lee started it when a scoreless six and a third. There you see the numbers for Jose. He and Betancourt have basically flip-flop now with Betancourt scheduled to work the eighth and Jimenez as the closer for the time being at least. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Burns and look out. Inside heat right there and it's 2-1. and one. beat out an infield hit when he puts one on the ground you better hurry because he's got pretty good speed for a big guy got a little pinch hitter coming in for Bobby Kelty Katze, Mark Katze who was originally in the lineup and then scratch will pinch hit he was just bringing a hot back for him as well His first pinch hitting pair this year. Out 
side with the fastball. These two faced each other in the National League. Katze playing with the Florida Marlins and San Diego. Lifetime 281 hitters in the National League. Not a big power guy. He will hit line drive, spray the ball. Pretty good speed. Line drive, pays it. Took Jimenez right back up the middle. So Katze on with a one-out single. Well, it's an all-Ohio weekend at the Jake as the tribe will take on the Cincinnati Reds. That's June 11th through the 13th. Friday night will be turned back to clock night to 75 when the Indians will wear their all-red uniform. Saturday, first 20,000 fans will receive a bobblehead of Omar Vizquel and Dave Concepcion. And then on Sunday, it'll be Kid Fun Day. Special Spider-Man 2 promotion. That one headed to right field. It's going to be a base hit for Chavez. And Katze will hold. Quickly Escobar gets it back into the cutoff, man. And the runners will be at first and second. But now... One out, and Jermaine Dye will come to the plate. Well, he finds the hole to Chavez, and you can see they're not going to test the arm of Escobar. Made the turn at second base. And here, back comes Oakland. They uh, now have a hit. The Oakland A's have stranded seven base runners since the fifth inning. The Indians have stranded six. Jermaine Dye fouls it off. Neither team this year has been involved in a one-to-nothing shutout. The A's are 2-0 and in shutouts, so they have not been shut out yet this year. The Indians once. No, but they have played their share of one-run ball games. They have played 15 of them, and that's second in the league. Only the Chicago White Sox have played more one-run games. And the A's are 9-6 and six in one-run games. You've got to figure that will happen with a good pitching staff. That's true. You're going to play a lot of close ball games, maybe low-scoring games if your, your offense is struggling. Both teams have struggled tonight. One and two now on Jermaine Dye. He has walked twice and struck out twice, yet to put the ball in play. Back Dye away, and it's two and two. to get that ground ball at one of his infielders. He is a sinker ball pitcher. That one running right in on the hands yeah. of Jermaine Dye. He's trying to dig it out in there. There has been only one base hit in this ball game with a runner in scoring position. The A's are one for eight. The Indians are 0 for seven. Cliff Bartosh, left-hander in the pen. Could be two, the scale the second one, relay is not in time. It pulled, the throw pulled Maloney off the bag. He tried to reach back and tag die, but missed him on the way by. So another double play that should have been made. That's, uh, that's, you're right, he makes his pitch right here and they're just giving him an extra out in this inning. It's an easy play, he's not coming in on him. And you can see the foot's got to come off. And he can't tag him as he goes by. The throw from Belliard pulls Merloni off. And he had plenty of time because Chavez was not down there on him. And it's just one extra out that the A's are going to get. And I'll tell you, they, I don't know if they want to. Well, Victor's looking into 
least put the sign out for first and third and two out. Just in case, the A's are thinking something. That pitch down low to Scott Hatterberg. He's 0 for 3 with a walk tonight. That's a strike at the knees. One ball and one strike. This is the one guy, too, in that Oakland lineup that's a pretty clutch player. Guy up at the plate with the game on the line. Runners in scoring position. He is hitting 417. That's going to go foul. third in the league coming in for tonight with runners in scoring position so he is a tough out and he popped him up this ball playable for Merloni in foul territory and the side is retired so Jimenez able to do the job in the bottom of the night It'll be Blake, Garrett, and Maloney in the bottom of the ninth. There you see them. Nothing but zeros as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Eight hits for Oakland, three hits for the Indians, and a new pitcher for the A's here in the bottom of the ninth. Jim Sear. Sear coming out for the 20th time. An 0-3 record this year. An ERA of 594 and a 16 and two-thirds innings. He struck out 19, walks up. A fastball slider, he's got a screwball that he will throw. <laughs> Good sink to it, and he'll run it into the right-handers. He'll face Casey Blake, Jody Garrett, Lou Merloni here in the bottom of the ninth inning. One strike pitch to Casey off the plate, one and one. Eric Burns moves over to left field now, and Katze is in center this ball hit high and deep to left looking up is Burns this ball is gone and the ball game is over Casey Blake one swing of the bat and the Indians win it one to nothing oh what a ball game and what a finish here tonight Casey Blake being mobbed at home plate boy that was some kind of ball game wasn't it Jim Nasir, as soon as Casey Blake made contact, he headed for the dugout. He knew it, Burns knew it, and Casey Blake knew it. The Indians won it here tonight. Wow, by a score of one to nothing. Boy, he wasted no time, did he? He tried to run that ball in, but it stayed right there. And Casey knew it. Right then and there, he realized that's a game winner. one nothing ball game. You hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth. Off the stair, he now goes to 0-4. And, and look at the crowd. Casey's hitting his third home run now in the last four or five games. So he's ready to roll. And a one nothing win. How about that? Of his last five hits, three of them have been home runs. This baby tonight, a game winner. We'll be back. Who said a one to nothing ball game can't be an exciting game? I mean, this this ball game had all the excitement of a 13 to 12 game. There, there were so many ups and downs. Oakland A's left 14 men on base here tonight and did not score. The final totals, the Indians one run on four hits, no errors. They left seven men on base. For the Oakland A's, no runs on eight hits, and they stranded 14 men here tonight. The winning pitcher, Jimenez, he's one and three. Jim Messier takes the loss. He is 0 and 4, 19,257. Watch this ball game. Two hours and 51 minutes to play it. There was one home run, one run in the ball game, and it came off the bat of Casey Blake 
leading off the bottom of the ninth inning, and the Indians win it by a score of one to nothing. And now it's time for our Ohio saving save of the game. And boy, it was a dandy too, coming out in the right center field off the bat of Durazo. Look at that, Jody Garrett going up against the wall, makes a beautiful timed catch. And you can see Durazo upset. That's our Ohio saving save of the game. And you can open a new Ohio savings totally free checking account and receive a free companion cruise. Choose from Carnival's Caribbean, Mexican Riviera, or Alaskan cruises. Call or visit Ohio Saving for details. For Casey Blake, his second walk-off home run of the year. He beat Tampa Bay on May 14th. Also in the... 10th inning, that one in the 10th inning, the 9th inning tonight, and Rick, why not? How about that being our McDonald's I'm loving it? Boy, I'll tell you what, the second pitch from Masir, and there it was, looked like that little screwball, and I'll tell you what, it went a long way for Casey Blake, his 6th home run, and the only run of the ball game, so Casey, I'm loving it. Talking about a one to nothing ball game being exciting as a 10-9 to -nine ball game, and, and there were so many opportunities for both teams here tonight, and, Rick, you've got to give credit to both starters, Cliff Lee and Barry Zito. They really battled. I'll tell you what, uh, Zito was in total control. He only gave up three hits in the ball game. But Cliff Lee, pitch for pitch, is out there, matched his season and career high with eight strikeouts. He walked a few too many guys, but he battled. He got When he needed the outs, Mike, he was awesome. And the Indians' bullpen did a good job again tonight. Worked two and two-thirds innings of scoreless baseball, and the Indians win it in dramatic style. Casey Blake with a walk-off homer. The Indians win it one to nothing. We'll be back with you tomorrow night. Game two of this series, the Indians versus the A's. Coming up next, it's the Cleveland Indians post-game report presented by Conrad's Total Car Care and Tire Centers. It will be with Andy Baskin. Good job by Cliff Lee tonight. Casey Blake put the icing on the cake. For Rick Manning, I'm Mike Higgins saying good night from Jacobs Field. We'll see you tomorrow night.